Hello everyone! Some time ago I decided to take these old batteries from some phones I don't use anymore and for that project I used this little thing. So this is the light power from Sparkfun. It, what it does is that it takes the uh, 3 or 4 volts that comes out of this battery pack and um, converts it to 5 volts which is suitable for charging phones with USB. But uh, the, the problem with that is that it costed me 20 euros or you can get it for 1995 bucks and you have live in the US. For that price you can get any USB powered battery charger. And um, of course then you don't have to use your own batteries. So if you want to get away cheaper, we will now look at some alternatives to this little thing. So here we have two gadgets for I ordered from Deal Extreme in China. They might look the same but they are actually very different. Uh, we are more interested in this one because it's a boost converter. Uh, this one on the other hand is a back converter which uh, transforms down a higher voltage into a lower voltage. So this one actually only costs 6 bucks uh, in contrast to the, the 20 bucks spark fun one. And it also differs from the spark fun one in the sense that uh, this can handle a much higher current. Uh, it can output 2.5 amps in contrast to spark fun which only could output a half amp. And also this has a little knob you can turn to adjust the output voltage from about 4 to 35 volts. In contrast to the spark from one that had a constant output of uh, 5 volts or 3.3 volts if you wanted. But my question is if this one has a stable enough voltage to charge a phone so it doesn't drift too much. The USB spec says that uh, the, the voltage of a USB port might vary about 5% if I remember. They are quite high requirements if we want to charge a phone. If the ripple is too high then it will disturb the touch screen so, so you can't use the touch screen while, while the phone is charging. So we will see if this one actually can be used to charge a phone. So now I have got the converter set. And the first thing I will do is measure the voltage of the battery to about 4 volts. Then I will move my meter to the output and see what range this thing has. So the lowest output voltage is 3.7 and uh, let's turn it up. Yes, and it goes easily to about 9 volts and uh, this bulb is rated at 9 volts, so I will disconnect it here. So we can see that the voltage does not change too much when I connect the bulb and uh, we can uh, have some extra precision if we want. So now I got two decimals on the meter and you see that uh, it only goes down just a little when I connect the bulb. So it's a good thing that the voltage does not drop too much. But I will continue to turn up the, the screw to see how high it really gets. So it stopped at 38 volts which is quite impressive if we think about that the maximum rated output voltage of this is 35 volts. And uh, yeah I mean the input, the minimum input is 4 volts so we are basically living on the limit there. And uh, this is good. But see what happens when we hook up a load to this. Another cool usage for the converter is to try to power this stereo. It normally runs off of 6 batteries and that gives us 9 volts. So if we use this as a battery emulator, um, yeah you see the voltage drops just a little when we turn on the thing. And then we turn on some music. You will hear that there is a stupid coil line coming from the converter all the time. And uh, as you heard when we turn on the music, 
the coil whine actually uh, gets louder to the music, so so that's quite a cool. So to answer my question in the beginning of the video, can you charge a phone with this thing? Um, well, that really depends on the ripple, that means uh, uh, if there is any noise in the voltage. So I don't have an oscilloscope to test that, so I will just charge my stupid phone! Now oh, nothing happened. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, there it charges. Um, and as I said, uh, um, a, a, a too high ripple, oh yes, the voltage went down there. Um, as I said, a, a too high ripple uh, disturbs the touchscreen because the touchscreen reads the small voltage and conductiveness of uh, your fingers. So, um, really a ripple can really disturb the touchscreen really much. Um, but I mean, really, it, it works great. Uh, the voltage went down a bit. Um, but as long as it's stable at 4.81 and doesn't worry, um, well, it's a good good thing. It has some good, bad noise and the voltage really is, is down. We can turn the voltage up, uh, but you can see it charging well. Okay, now we have a little higher voltage. Really no problems whatsoever. So as you saw earlier, um, when I put the thing to charging, the voltage really went down a bit. And uh, if we want it to be according to USB specs, the voltage should be between 5.25 and uh, 4.75 volts. So I mean now it's in the upper limit and, uh, and when I plug it in, it keeps the voltage yeah, I mean, now it didn't went out under 5, but yeah, I mean, it keeps the voltage in, in range for the USB specs, so that's a good thing. But of course the question is, can you live with this freaking sound? I mean, really, this is, this is really high now, I think if I turn the voltage down a little, it will get a, a little better. But really, that, that was the worst, now, really, this is bad too, but... Oh, this is a little better, but it's still really annoying, I tell you that. So you might be wondering, why did I use my Nokia Lumia as a guinea pig instead of more uh, a more useless gadget? Well, the answer is that this thing has never been able to hold up a call for more than maybe 4 minutes in average. And uh, last week I got a call from a potential employer and I was hoping that call would be like over in 4 minutes, but it took 7 minutes the call, so, so that's why I really hate this phone right now.